Hi, and welcome back to Things Made Simple. Today, I'd like to give you a quick tour of a project I've been working on over the last couple weekends. Um, this one is based on a sound chip called the YM2149F. It's a chip that was released by Yamaha, and before that, uh, General Instruments released one under the name the AY38910. Um, between those two brands, this thing has been used in all kinds of stuff, the Atari ST, the ZX Spectrum, you know, a whole bunch of different arcade machines and pinball machines. So it definitely has this like retro sound to it, a lot of nostalgia there. So when I saw this thing pop up on uh, AliExpress for like a couple dollars for a whole bunch of them, it was like five of them, I just sprang at it and, you know, it arrived here and here we are producing a module. So to give a little more detail about how the chip works, uh, it has a three voice synthesizer and each of the voices can produce tone or noise or both. Uh, it also has a built-in envelope generator that produces these sort of like repeating envelopes. So it's really more of a low frequency oscillator uh, with a, a few different waveforms that it can create. And uh, another interesting feature is that it, it has uh, two 8-bit I.O. ports on it as well. So I'm using one of them right now to control these LEDs. Um, they're used for the menu system to show which, which menu you're on. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, and then the last thing I thought was really interesting is that this chip accepts a really wide variety of clock input signals. Uh, it, it's designed specifically for two, a two megahertz clock and a four megahertz clock. Uh, and it, it actually has, I guess, different wavetables built into it um, based on which of those clocks you're using. Uh, but even beyond that, uh, you can feed it a one megahertz clock up to around nine megahertz before it starts to fail. And as the clock changes, it's changing the pitch, it's changing the envelope speed. And so you can get some interesting effects by, by manipulating that. So to manipulate the clock speed, I'm using a little trick I saw from Juanito Moore, where he took a PT2399 delay chip, which is a CV controllable delay, but the, the chip actually has its own built-in clock generator, um, and it outputs a clock signal based on that clock generator. And um, I, I don't think you typically would see a delay circuit using that for anything, but in this case, it's super useful because we don't need a delay, we just need a clock signal. <laughs> and you can feed it a voltage and it will give you, um, it'll give you that clock signal output. So I'm feeding the output clock into the YM2149. And then I have a dial right here that allows me to change that clock speed. This um, potentiometer at the top is really more of like a trim uh, and it's allowing me to set the high end of the frequency, uh, which right now, this, the way this is all configured, will go from a 2.3 megahertz clock up to um, almost a nine megahertz clock. And uh, the chip right now is configured to expect a four megahertz clock. Okay, now this is an oscillator and so you want it to stay in tune. And in order to do that, um, I've also added a clock divider. So it takes the output clock, it goes into a CD4040 chip, and then I'm using, I'm dividing it by uh, 1024. So the CD4040 is a binary counter chip and you can effectively use it as a clock divider. So right now I'm dividing that clock by 1024, which then feeds back into the Arduino and then it allows the Arduino to track how fast that clock is going and you can basically do tuning that way. Now over here, this is uh, basically an MS-20 filter. Um, I pulled this off of Schmitz Bits, um, which is the you know, design from Rene Schmitz. And I haven't really changed a lot. It's basically what was on that website. Uh, the only difference really is that I couldn't get uh, green LEDs to produce a, a, a good sounding resonance. It just was very, very harsh um, when it started to generate that sine wave. So I swapped in 4148 uh, diodes, seemed to work okay, so that's kind of what I've rolled with. And then down here I've got you know control for the cutoff frequency. This I'm just using to simulate uh, a con control voltage input. So I think in the module I'll probably end up providing a control voltage uh, jack for the, for the filter. And then over here is resonance. And um, now the the cutoff frequency, while well, I'll have this input signal here, it's also being controlled by the Arduino. So 
the Arduino is actually performing a, a whole lot of heavy lifting in this circuit. It is setting all the registers of the YM2149F um, to set the frequency, to set the envelope, and all that kind of stuff. But it's also um, directly controlling, if you wanted to, the volume of each of the, the different voices. So that's, it's actually creating a, an ADSR envelope for each voice. Um, and then it's also creating a, a separate ADSR envelope for the filter. And it's creating a low frequency oscillator with a variety of wave shapes also for the filter. And it's, it allows you to also mix those two signals together to create this kind of like cross between uh, an envelope and a low frequency wave. Now, in order to control all that stuff, you would probably need a lot of knobs and switches and things like that. And um, it would just make the module a lot bigger. So in order to keep things a little bit more manageable from a cost standpoint, um, I decided to include a menu system and uh, I try to keep it as shallow as possible so you're not menu diving everywhere. Um, but that's what these potentiometers here are going to control. So this one controls what menu you're on. And as you adjust it, it's going to change these um, LEDs to kind of signify what menu you're in. And then uh, you'll be able to change different options on the screen. And these are kind of tied from left to right. So you can have four options per screen. And each of these will tie to a different option. So with that said, let's take a quick look at how the menu works and what the features are and how it kind of sounds. So again, there is one dial here that allows you to switch between all the different menus uh, that are in here. And there's actually six different menu screens. So the first one focuses on uh, the different noise options. So this is kind of affecting whether or not we're gonna have a, a tone, like a, a, a note. or white noise, or a combination of uh, the two. And then the next one is uh, determines the frequency of the white noise. So there's kind of different colors that it will produce of noise, and this will you know affect that. In the next menu, we can change the, uh, the VCA options of the YM2149F. Um, this allows us to pick between different LFO styles if we want a repeating envelope, um, or you can kind of pick between having the thing be on all the time, so it just goes from you know, full off to full on as soon as you press a note, um, or using an envelope that's built into the Arduino. So I've implemented a, an envelope generator in the Arduino and I can use that to kind of directly manipulate the level of each of the, the voices. The gate option is there to uh, determine whether or not you wanna gate the note. So when you press down on the note, it turns on. When you let go, it turns off. Um, and this kind of determines whether that's, that's the behavior that you're looking for. Um, or whether you want the note to just kind of stay on indefinitely. So you can, you can affect that. When you're in uh, any of the LFO options, then the period option appears, and then that allows you to affect how quickly the envelope is turning on and off, and, or how quickly that, that uh, LFO is running. Uh, the next menu gives you control over the Arduino's uh, envelope generator. So this is the, the envelope generator implemented into the Arduino. And you can change attack, decay, sustain, release, all that kind of stuff. Now this is only really used if you set it to um, ADSR, otherwise it's just going to ignore all of those settings. But if you do, then you can uh, change it just like you would any other envelope generator. Um, similarly, on the filter side, we have uh, a filter LFO that's implemented in the Arduino 
Uh, this is just changing the cutoff frequency of the filter. And um, you can select different wave styles. You can set the period of the wave. And then you can also affect uh, how much of the cutoff frequency is influenced by the LFO versus uh, the filter's envelope generator, which is the next menu. So the, the filter actually has uh, an ADSR associated with it as well, so you can set all these things here. And then back on this screen, you can determine what percentage of the cutoff frequency is influenced by the LFO versus the envelope generator. Um, the last screen is used for tuning. So I mentioned before that this thing is uh, sort of the, the ideal clock speed is about four megahertz, and um, but you can change it, and as you change it, it's going to affect the pitch and everything. But you want to be able to recenter it back on four megahertz, and so that's kind of why this is here. So you can you can set it directly, and it's it's recording. A set of um, uh, two like clock speed measurements, and then it's showing them in that line. So you can kind of see the variation and how much it <laughs> shifts around as it's uh, recording those. But this just gives you the ability to, to tune it and make sure that you're kind of staying where you need to be. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up for this video. The next steps here are going to be taking the breadboard and actually documenting the schematic of this. Uh, you know, it's based on a bunch of schematics that I've found and kind of merged together, but I've changed a lot of the parts and components and stuff. So I really just need to make sure that I've got it all put down in a schematic, uh, put it into KiCad. And then um, I'll also start to uh, document those schematics and the way things are working on the Things Made Simple website so that you can follow along and build this yourself if you'd like to. And then after that, I think it's going to be time to actually create a module around this. So designing the PCB layout and then getting that printed and, you know, actually building it into the modular synth. Also, I will try to get a GitHub set up for the code here and then get that posted as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments like this video and uh, we'll see you next time.